Are you reacting or responding to the stress and anxiety in your life right now? We're going to talk about the distinction between the two and how it might be helpful in keeping you balanced. COVID-19 continues to create great uncertainty. And with uncertainty, we begin to feel more anxious and fearful and frustrated and angry and overwhelmed. Our tolerance for the changes that we're having to make in our lives, the frustration of living a life that we are not used to, is starting to surge again as we transition back to work. Now, for those of you in healthcare who've been working, who are essential workers, You've already made that transition. But what I'm hearing from many healthcare providers now is their anxiety ticking up a bit as some of the ancillary staff returning to the hospital, some of the clinics opening up, also experiencing a change in how the world at large is continuing to manage and navigate through this staying vigilant, wearing masks, keeping distance, and yet dipping their toe back into activities and returning to some sense of a new normal. And with that, I know creates great anxiety. Anxiety in the healthcare world for potential uptick in cases of COVID, which means ultimately a potential surge of cases that you may have to be managing. And in the dialysis area, I know that we're starting to see more and more research talking about how COVID is impacting kidney function and more and more people needing to be dialyzed, which of course puts more pressure and tension on each and every one of you. So I thought today it would be important to talk about coping strategies around whether we are reacting or we are responding. I want to make the distinction here because I think it's important that we understand that as we try to navigate our way through yet again another transition that is creating some stress. Let's take a deeper dive and look at the distinction between reaction and responding. Both play a role in how we cope and navigate through uncertainty, stress, fear, anxiety, depression, all of it. So reacting is part of that primitive area of our brain. Something triggers us, something makes us frightened, something makes us angry, something makes us stressed, something makes us feel overwhelmed, and we react. It's almost as if it subconsciously happens, it's a knee-jerk response, it's our brain going into that protective, primitive mode of response. Every mammal has that. Every, every mammal can react to a situation. Responding, as opposed to reacting, is a higher level, more cognitive function of the brain. It requires us to pause long enough to integrate and formulate our re response to what we are feeling and what we're overwhelmed with and what we're struggling with. So, so think about responding as the natural, healthy way of extending the time between the thing that triggered us and our response. The longer we can make that pause or that period in between the, the trigger and our response, the more in control we are and the more likely we're, we're going to use a response as opposed to a reaction in coping. So for example, thinking about the, the thing that causes you to feel angry and frustrated and overwhelmed, our reactions are not static. They ebb and flow. So how intensely we feel in a moment when we pause long enough to process why we're feeling that way, what's happening that's making us uh, experience that high level of stress or anxiety or fear or whatever it might be, and then formulating how you wanna to respond to that so that your response is in alignment with what you want, what you need, what your values are, what your belief system is, as opposed to reacting, which puts us in a place of being defensive, more likely to be blaming, more likely to become more angry and more frustrated and more stressed. The more that we reprogram how our brain responds as opposed to react, 
it becomes the new normal. You know, our brain is a muscle, so developing this new muscle memory is a critical component to changing the way that we actively cope. But it takes time, like everything else. It's one little teeny tiny change at a time that over time becomes the new normal for us. So I want to present to you a couple of strategies to help you shift from less reaction to more active responding in the way that you are coping with this new transition. So the first thing is the obvious, which is to pay conscious attention to the pause. When something triggers you, the stress reaction, focus on the pause. Are you re reacting with a knee-jerk reactive position? Or are you able to pause long enough, even if initially you're only able to do that for a few extra minutes, taking a collective deep breath, becoming more consciously aware of what is triggering you and what you want out of that circumstance or that interaction with somebody. That moves you from a place of automatic reaction to conscious, deliberate, purposeful responding. It sounds so simple and yet it's difficult to do because we are creatures of reacting. But the more that we consciously step into a place of responding, we absolutely will feel more in control, more in control of ourselves, more in control of our environment, and more in control of the moment that we are in, as opposed to focusing on outside of ourselves, all of the uncertainty, all of the things that are out of our control, other people's reactions, other people's behavior, other people's responses, and moving it back more internal to give us a, a sense of control. And the second thing is to label how you're feeling. And I've talked about this in other videos, but it applies here as well. We become automatic creatures. We have reactions. But being able to label what that reaction is. Am I angry? Am I frustrated? Am I exhausted? Am I hungry? Am I bored? Am I irritated? Am I depressed? Am I exhausted? Whatever the feeling is, the reaction might look the same. It might just come out as anger, yelling, blaming, defensive, but labeling what it is that is triggering it puts you back into a position of control so now you can actually respond to it. If your frustration is about, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I haven't had a break, and you label that, then your response becomes taking care of those needs. If your reaction is, I'm angry at this patient, as at this colleague at the circumstance, at the policies, at the lack of attention to our needs, and you label that, then your response becomes proportionate and specific to managing and getting those needs met. Otherwise, it becomes just this reactive exchange without any conscious coping strategies being put in place. And a third technique to move us from being reactive to actively responding is to take, um, I think about it as sort of taking the zoom lens on your camera and moving way out of the context. When we get stuck in a moment, it seems huge and big and all important. But when we pause long enough and we take the zoom lens and we put that situation into context, sometimes we might come away believing, yes, this is a very important situation. It requires full energy from me. And other times when we put the zoom lens on and we look at the thing that is frustrating or frightening or making us anxious and we look at it in the big picture, it becomes less important. Either way, you will be the person in control of navigating the context of what is happening and what is triggering you when you look at the big picture. So practice sort of that zoom lens, move back, don't become so focused deep internally within that moment, but rather at the big picture. 
And of course, moving from a place of being reactive to responding is all about finding those places in our moments and throughout our day that we have control over. The more things that we take back control and we stack them on top of each other, we feel empowered. It's like in our own little space of feeling control while the rest of the world around us has much uncertainty. Helping us move from reacting to that uncertainty to empowering ourselves by focusing on the things that are within our control makes a huge shift in how we navigate through this difficult time. So I thank you once again for all that you are doing to take good care of patients, your family, and I hope that you're taking very good care of yourselves as well. We'll see you in the next one.